My name is Mark Parker. I am the owner of Silver Fox Falconry, and we're a company that's based in Gloucestershire. And we have a falconry school up in Little Dean, uh, in, deep in the forest of Dean. Uh, we also have a large um, contract and association with Oxford University. And also we make a lot of equipment. And this is my fiance Helen, and uh, she helps me, assists me in all aspects of the of the company. And um, together we have been playing around with this Rokro. And I should explain that neither one of us have flown the Rokro before we received. Well, I should I should. To be honest about that, really. I had a go. I had a go of it when it was high up in the air and just going around in circles with bigger ropes. And somebody got it up to that point, and somebody else got it down. So just a five percent go. But apart from that, I've never flown it, played around with it, um, put it together or anything. And um, I think the same goes for, goes for Helen. So we were offered the chance to test this out and have a bit of fun and see what we could achieve so between the two of us we started on a journey a couple of weeks ago of doing exactly that through the falconry school and all the things that we get involved with which is teaching people you know i'm very much more of a traditionalist i like to swing a lure for a falcon and other birds of prey so this represented a part of modern day falconry that we really wanted to look at so that we could advise students some of the pros and cons and also really learn how to do it and fly it ourselves because it may be useful and initially the, 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 the most positive thing for me from my own experience is this could so easily be used to rehabilitate a wild injured bird of prey especially um, a falcon or something like that and to get it hunting before you release it back into the wild and get it fit and for me that was a major thing having tried to rehabilitate a number of birds in the past This is just a close-up of um, some of the items in the in the box, just so that everyone can clearly see. Um, I've never put one of these together before. I have flown one before, but I've had a lot of help, i.e. Matt standing right next to me. Um, so this is going to be a real tester for me. Um, predominantly a lure person, but, you know, these are very much a modern or a new part of modern day falconry and in a day where quarry is less accessible and not so much available having other items that we can use to exercise fly our birds seems like a, a good move in the right in the right direction and something that's very very helpful getting birds fit and having some fun with the birds and also <laughs> flying these things which seems to be from what i know the tricky part but unless you get in and have a go how do you know how good or bad or the benefits of it unless you actually work through the whole process yourself but it all looks pretty good to me very posh very neat and tidy no breaks no cracks no breakages yet initially once we put it together me and Helen did some basic straight flights once we could get it yeah. It took a bit of time for us to get to the launch right, I think. Yeah, it, it did, yeah. Um, I'll openly admit, you know, Helen is much better than I am. Um, she's, she's, got, she's much more light-fingered. I was a bit heavy-handed, really. <laughs> and um, it, it pays to be light-handed on the controls, which are very sensitive. Anyway, we got it flying. We did a straight line in a, in a, in a fairly big field, probably about... 200 meters by 100 meters across but rapidly realized that that was not big enough i think if you stood in the middle of a field and you had at least 200 meters 300 meters in any direction with minimal amount of trees and buildings and power lines and houses and cars that would be ideal and we did find a couple of places over in, in hereford with a friend of ours so i took it over there because helen was busy at work and um, I had a go, and I must have crashed it 20 times in a row 
I got my air off. Um, you broke the wings. And um, I was getting a little bit like, I must be an idiot. There must be something I'm doing that's wrong. So, and then we realised after a while, and I'll just, I'll just try and show you, that this white thing here is, as far as I know, is a stabiliser. So that helps the Roco stabilise itself as you're flying it and corrects all the mistakes that we sort of make. And unbeknownst to me, that had come loose from earlier crashes. So I was trying to fly the Roco with a stabiliser flown around. And having chatted to the guys at Wingby, they told me that there was no way <laughs> I was going to fly it with a stabiliser flown around. So we re-glued it. We went out for another day, and it's just the third third day, sort of playing around around with it. And, um, and as I said, bear in mind that Helen has not flown this before. We set it all up as per the instructions, and it was launched. And Helen flew it for. Oh, I ran the battery out very quickly. Yeah, five <laughs> or ten minutes, whizzing it around all over the place, doing all sorts of trickery, pokery. Um, and made it look, if I'm honest, that I've actually been doing it for years. Yep, here we go. There you go. Believe it or not, that is Helen's first time ever flying a road crow in a big open field other than doing straight lines. She's been on a simulator at one of the falconry fairs and had a go, but she's taken it up to, I don't know, a couple of hundred feet and um, just circling around. And then what we're going to try and do is see if she can get it to fly down and land. And I'm just going to take a, a step back. We're going to see if she's going to bring it down and then try and land it at some stage. We're just doing a couple of circuits, having a little mooch around. And here we go, into the wind. She's taken the throttle right the way off and she's gonna try and steer it all the way over here. So I keep the video on and see how she does. That's beautiful. Then I had a go and blow me down. I managed to fly the thing. Um, and effectively, you know, as I said, only really the third day that we'd been out. And once we'd re glued the stabilizer and followed the instructions again, it, it just went really, really well. Um, and the, the beauty of it is that previous day I'd crashed it so many times I'd snapped everything but the glue is brilliant and the glue when you glue it like I have you can see breaks across there does not have or from what I can see any impact on the aerodynamics no it flew absolutely fine there's no, no problem at all um, we had quite a few issues with it the thing that, that, that I also noticed again when I the previous day when I had numerous nose dives, I glued his nose back together a few times, is that see these wires which obviously work the elements there, is that when your wing snaps it pulls these and it actually pulls these out of the sockets in the main body body. I didn't realise this had happened when I'd been gluing the wing together and I couldn't understand why my elevators were not working properly. So again, you know, you take it back to basics, you take it all apart, you look at it, check everything. And I think the secret is really, if you do fly it and you don't have a soft landing, check it, you know, take the elastic land apart, check everything is there. 
and I, I think if you go through all the steps, and we did on numerous occasions, and every time we checked everything was there and in the right socket and everything was set up right, um, we succeeded. And, and yesterday, I think there was just only one or two dodgy flights, but pretty much everybody, and I even gave it to my friend to fly, you know, and we all flew it successfully, whizzing around the sky. I think for me, you know, I, I was very tentative when we started. Um, but I think sometimes you just have to attack it. If you're not used to consoles and games and stuff, and used to a glove and you know, a hammer and a sword and bits of wood and stuff, that it's alien to me. And I just was very tentative. But yesterday, just attacked it. Just thought, right, okay, full forward, let's go for it. And that, that made a massive difference. Just, just not being scared of breaking it. Because I've bro <laughs> broken, bro it. broken it so many times the day before. <laughs> I realise that it is repair is repairable, um, and you know I, I think these brake lines are consistent with a lot of people. You know, um, but yeah, we had great fun. I really enjoyed it, and I don't think you can dismiss it. You know, there are people in the Falcon world that have dismissed it. I think you've got to give it a go. I think you've got to give it a go. There's pros and cons of everything, and there's benefits downside to, to, to many different aspects of training techniques but certainly has its place it's a part of modern day falconry um, but you know with big thanks to Wingbeat for giving us the opportunity uh, and I hope some of the things that we've done um, and some of the things we've highlighted I hope that is of use to somebody out, out there but I always say don't knock it till you try it so give it a go